Loads of new cars are earning poor ratings in this side impact test. Fords, Toyotas and even Volvos. But why? How, with car safety higher than it's ever been, are modern cars failing this test? Well, I've done some digging to find out exactly what's going on here. So this all comes from some tests done by the IIHS, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. They test loads of cars from the USA with the view to improve their overall safety and ultimately reduce road deaths. They run so many interesting tests, things like crashes without seatbelts, overlap tests, what happens if you crash a new car into an old car, and what happens if you crash into the underside of a truck. And it's these hundreds of tests that have allowed them to collate all of this information and shine some light on the safety of cars that we are all buying. For example, they collate all of these tests per car. Then we can look at which are the safest and which aren't. Look at this. This is a chart for the lowest deaths per million registered years and all of these cars score zero, which is absolutely incredible. Then for the highest and at the moment the worst is the US version of the Ford Fiesta with 141 deaths per million registered years. Although this number is hard to picture, considering that many cars are keeping this number in the single digits, it doesn't look great for the Fiesta. So this is what crash testing is all about, collecting vital information to prevent this in the future. And crash tests have been around for a very long time. The typical one we see is the head-on collision tests. You run a car at a set speed, normally around 40 miles an hour, into a solid object, normally a wall or a concrete block. Then with hundreds of sensors all over the car, wall and crash test dummy, the test can provide vital information about how a car behaves in a serious impact. And this has really worked. The difference between an old and a new car in this test is stunning. But not all crashes are like this. For example, the next worst crash to have is the side impact. This is as if someone has run a red light at a crossroads, essentially a high-speed collision hitting the side of your car. And this is a really tough test because the natural shape of the car means there is less metal and material between you and the impact compared to a front-on collision. Imagine a car with crumple zones at the side too. That would be really tricky to park. But get this, side impact impacts only account for 15 to 20 percent of incidents on US roads, but account for 23 percent of the deaths. But what is encouraging is that if your car is rated as good in this test, you're 70 percent less likely to be killed in an incident than if your car is rated as poor. This led the IIHS to come up with a new and improved side impact test, which included a higher mass in the barrier. That's this trolley type thing, and it now travels at a higher speed. Where the barrier was previously 3,300 pounds, which was the average mass of an SUV at the time, this is now 4,200 pounds, the average mass today. It now travels at 37 miles an hour rather than 31, as speeds on the road aren't going down either. Now, at the time, the lighter barrier was representative of a typical car crash, but over the past 15 years, the average car weight has increased massively with more and more large SUVs on the road. So the IIHS revised their barrier to better replicate a real world incident. But what's really interesting is that they found the barrier created a different impact than if they used an actual SUV as a striking object. The barrier applied the force more evenly, allowing the testing car to perform better than it would in the real world. Just look at this. Look at how the test car rolls away from the barrier, whereas the test car moves towards the SUV when that's used. So now the IIHS are adapting the shape of the barrier to make it more representative of a typical SUV. So why are we talking about SUVs so much? Well, it turns out that if you were to choose what would hit you in a crash like this, aside from a truck, the worst choice would be a mid to large size SUV. They are heavier than the typical car and the mass is located higher, meaning that the majority of the force is placed on the window and the A, B and C pillars of the car. Whereas a hatchback would hit the stronger area of the car, the doors and the floor. Before this, the test varied the height of the barrier with the test car. So smaller cars would be hit lower than large cars, meaning the impact was always around the middle to top of the door. But this doesn't really make sense because a large SUV or truck 
could hit any type of car. So this new barrier has been made to better replicate the impact that would happen from a typical SUV. And this means the test cars have to absorb over 80% more energy than before. And it impacts the car at a higher position as well. So how did our current crop of very safe road cars get on? These were cars like the Ford Escape, the Kia Sportage, the Honda HRV, and the Jeep Renegade, all of which are the very latest models for the US market they all got either poor or marginal ratings, which obviously is not a good look. Only one out of the 20 small SUVs that were tested got a good rating. The Mighty Mazda CX-5. What's going on here? All 20 of these cars got a good rating in the previous test, and now they are far from it. But the IIHS weren't surprised. They said, obviously these test results aren't great, but they are in line with what we expected when we adopted this more stringent test. So what would it take to get a good result in this test? How did the Mazda manage it and the other cars didn't? So if you look at the test, the car deforms a lot. But if we show you from the inside of the car, the passengers are protected very well. Mazda has strengthened the side structures and added these curtain airbags to the side of the car. These protect the passengers and cushion the blow from the massive impact. Now look at the impact with the Honda HRV, a car that achieved a poor rating. This still has the curtain airbags, but you can see the impact to the driver and the passengers is much, much worse. But the key here is how far the side structures of the car have deformed. They pretty much came halfway into the seating space. And this was down to the side impact structure essentially coming away from the floor of the car. And don't forget, this was a car that achieved a good rating in the previous test. Some of the other cars that struggled in this test had strong B pillars, this pillar here, but the doors weren't strong enough. So they caved in instead. So the manufacturer found that by adding strengthening horizontal beams in the doors improved this, which was another positive discovery from these tests. And here's the thing. Back in 2003, when the previous test was brought in, only one in five of the cars got a good rating. And now with this new test, the results are similar. The majority of cars aren't achieving good results, but that's by design. It goes to show just how important crash testing is. It's the drive forward in tougher testing that has directly impacted the improvement in safety of cars that follow. If you passed a test first time, you learn nothing. But hang on, which car would you want to be sat in during a crash like this? Well, the IIHS provide a list of all the cars they tested. And here's your list. The cars that achieved zero deaths per million registered years, mainly luxury SUVs and the mighty Golf. Yeah. Personally, I'd take the Range Rover. But these tests aren't the only tests where new cars aren't doing so great. Many are actually rolling over in the Moose test, and we'll explain why in this video. Thanks very much for watching. I've noticed loads of you aren't actually subscribed to our channel, so if that's you, please do, and I'll catch you in the next video.